These stories are inspired by the actual case files of the Office of Scientific Investigation and Research. I call him Shorty. Yeah, among other things. Well, what's the problem? When you're that drunk, you don't mouth off to a cop. No, I merely intended to engage him in a lively debate upon the restorative powers of the single malt. Jesus, hire a maid. She could bail you out next time. Where do you keep the coffee? Clean out. Of course. The tide is swelling, Matt. Can you smell it in the air? Feel the sea change beneath the deck? You just don't get it. It's the big one. Governments are going to top them. Armageddon doesn't just happen. Well, it's their signs. You have to be alert. The signs. I'll transfer my mutual funds into savings bonds. This is my sleep. It's this beginning. Relax, Juan. It's okay. How do you know my name? How do you know my name? What's going on? Stop it! What are you doing? People are familiar with the phrase, a close encounter of the third kind, the visual sighting of a being associated with a UFO. But there are also close encounters of the fourth kind, the abduction of an individual by an alien species, and in the following case, a CE5, or close encounter of the fifth kind, direct contact with an alien species. 
Are we going to see Kelly while we're in town? <laughs> With Elsinger's approval? <laughs> Not a chance. Uh, just following up a lead. Here we are. Hey, if it doesn't pan out, we got front row seats for the solar eclipse. <laughs> yeah, if we can see it. <laughs> When the sun disappears behind the moon for those brief few minutes, it's almost, um, what's the word? Paranormal. That's the one. Hmm. Carlotta Mendoza? We're with the Office of Scientific Investigation and Research. Are you here to help Juan? He has been this way ever since the fire. I don't understand him. I want my son back. Juan, you have visitors. Look, to Brett. To Brett. I'm Matt Prager. This is Lindsay Donner. What's the matter, Juan? It hurts. What hurts, Juan? My head. In the ambulance. They did it to me. They made me hear voices. Who's they? These are all symptoms of schizophrenia. Either that or he's been watching too much sci-fi. Why are you bending the spoon, Juan? Voices tell me to. What else do the voices say? To find a second. I need to find a second. <laughs> I'm still not sure what it is we're looking for here. I mean, aliens conducting experiments on people in the back of an ambulance? Well, maybe the, uh, maybe the mothership was in the shop. <sighs> well, when you can tell me, I'd like to know what's going on, okay? Humor me, okay? All right, I'll meet you back here. It's pretty straightforward, faulty wiring, someone tripped around breaker. Juan Mendoza claims he heard a loud bang right before the place went up. Yeah, I know. Maybe the fuse box blowing. Huh. How toxic were the chemicals stored here? 
You ever experienced a chemical fire, Mr. Prager? No. Fumes can chew up your lungs in a second. So I take it everyone was decked out in protective wear? Oxygen, shields, the works? Absolutely. Including the paramedics? Of course. So you don't recognize those two EMTs who took Mendoza to the hospital? No. What condition was Mr. Mendoza in when you first arrived here at the scene? Smoke inhalation. We hauled him down at First General, admitted him. And he was checked out and released later that night. You've got the report. But you still got us down here, so what else can we tell you? Well, you see, Mr. Mendoza has had a hard time adjusting since the fire. Was there anything unusual about the ambulance ride? Unusual? What do you mean? Oh, I don't know. Uh, did you administer any kind of treatment? Anything out of the ordinary? No, you never lost consciousness. Anyone other than the two of you and Mr. Mendoza in the ambulance? No, ma'am. Is this a vehicle here? Mm -hmm. Mind if I take a look? Knock yourself out. Glad to help. I don't like lying like this. Mike, it's me, Matt. Ooh. Man. What do you want, Matt? Uh, just following up on what you showed me the other day on your computer. I showed you nothing. No, that's true. It, it was on your screen when I brought you home. Don't be absurd. I'd never be that reckless. What did you see, Matt? I'll be specific. I've got to know. The, the info about Juan Mendoza. I, I've tracked him down. Hmm. I'm sorry, you're mistaken. I don't know who or what you're talking about. Yeah, but uh, Mike... Don't ever call me on this line again. Ever. I'll contact you. That's the procedure. Goodbye. How's Mike? He's, he's fine. You talked to Mike recently? From time to time, yeah. How do you seem? <laughs> Overcomplicating his life, same as usual. <laughs> Why do you ask? No reason.
Nothing more than what I read in your initial report. But let me ask you, Matthew. Did you have any help finding Miss Mendoza? Why do you ask? I just want to know if there really is cause for a full investigation here. You're expecting a visit from the Tooth Fairy. Look closer. Pulled it out himself. Ouch. What's that? That's why we're still here. Well, it looks like some kind of implant. Could be a microchip. I can't immediately identify the metal, but the intricacy of the workmanship is it's beautiful. OK, I got a copy of Juan's dental records. Let's have a look at this. Now, this one was taken about a month ago in a regular checkup. He's never had a filling. Floss is regular, yeah. Genetics. Anyway, <laughs> take a look at this. This was taken today. Microchips here, here, and here. This was not implanted by your friendly family dentist. Someone anchor these devices deep inside the crown right to the nerve the only way to remove these chips is to remove the teeth i wouldn't recommend that until we understand fully their effect on him what is it, it seems to be sending out a signal we're receiving one mendoza was always talking about voices in his head what about mind control what, the, the chips make them bend cutlery and, and draw weird symbols? Well, that could be possible if it was somehow attached to the optic nerve. Mendoza doesn't know why he's doing what he's doing. Oh, the frequency's so high. Small bursts, they're like pulses. But how that's possible? Let me try something. Information overload. Processor couldn't handle it. Wow. I think I've discovered when those chips could have been implanted. The fire took place here. This is the hospital where Mendoza was taken. Now, the trip takes four or five minutes max. I verified the arrival of the ambulance with the hospital surveillance video. The trip took 23 minutes. That's 18 minutes longer than it should have. Our men in uniform have some explaining to do. Detonation device. A fire was set deliberately. Any word on the paramedics? Their dispatcher doesn't know where they went, and they weren't in the hospital, so I'm following up on the ambulance itself. Well, how come? It's in the shop. I thought you said it was in A1 condition. <laughs> yeah, I did, Matt. But now it's not. It's here and it's out of commission, okay? All right, keep me posted.
glad it's me. They're dead, aren't they? Yes. Shot one spy in the ear, execution style. How could you know? Because right now I'm looking at a very dead Fire Marshal Stevens. Cops are all over the murder sites. Wanna bet they'll rule them accidental? Only if you give me some odds. Look, I traced the plate on the sedan to the Department of Defense. I mean, you'd think they'd know better. What's the military doing mucking around anyway? Maybe to cover up what was done to Mendoza. Hmm. I'll check it out. Thanks, Rick. You know, maybe Juan really did have a close encounter. Or he was a guinea pig in some secret military experiment. Yeah, or both. Anyway, we ought to touch base with Ossinger. No. What do you mean? He's, he's got to know about this. I mean, something huge is going down. I said no. Not yet. Isn't it a little cold for fishing? Any bites? I got a lot of nibbles, but I threw back the ones that are too small. Still trying to land a big one, eh, Michael? I'm not after bottom feeders, Frank, if that's what you mean. You know all about bottom feeders, don't you? What do you want? <laughs> a direct question. Now, that's refreshing. We need to start working together again. These games are, are counterproductive. They're bad business. Business? That's the operative word, right? It would be far more efficient if you were on side. Remember Moby Dick, Frank. Ahab wouldn't stop until he begged the great white whale, the big one. And he had to do it his way all by himself. But in the end, didn't the whale swallow Ahab? Ahab knew that going in. Keep in touch, for old time's sake. My son is getting only worse. He can't sleep, he can't eat. We'll get Dr. Hendricks. He wants to find a second. A second what? I don't know. A second. multinationals to store their chemical waste indiscriminately. My bill, when introduced, will make the punishment fit the crime. For those of you just joining us, we are live at the Center What is that? What do you see? Isn't that near where the chemical fire was? Yeah, it's just down the street. Quack. What, do you we recognize have got to take Oh. We have got to take response. There's a third person out there. I'd like to bring in a remote viewer. Catherine has a party. You're assuming, of course, that this third person's not simply a product of a delusional mind. You saw the microchip? No. No remote viewers. Why not? This case has entered sensitive territory, Matthew. What kind of sensitive? Military sensitive or government sensitive? Political. 
Please try to discover what is affecting these people, make it stop, and release them. Ma'am? Senator Bradbury also has microchip implants in her teeth. I don't know what she's doing, but she's spending hours carving it out of one of her antique tables. It's obsessive compulsive behavior, just like Mr. Mendoza with his spoon bending. They tell me to find the third. The voices are real. The senator was just telling me that she had an emergency appendectomy last week. Well, that's when this all started. Did you go to the hospital in an ambulance? Yes. I want to show you something. Do you know this man? No. No. I've never met him. He is the first. I am the second, and, it, and somewhere there is a third. They're telling me, they're telling me to, to find him and go to the destination. Who's telling you? I'm hearing their voices right now. They, they are insisted. Otherwise, it... Otherwise. Otherwise, the, the, the triangle is incomplete and I'm useless. I, I would be of then no used to them and 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 then safe house to like and work on what's going on. Mike, you're the only one in town I can trust. Will you follow? They're always watching, you know that, don't you? What's going on you? Who's always watching? Check your colleagues, am I right? And when I'm out of here, you're using our friendship against me. It's because of our friendship that I'm here. Don't look at them, Mike. They need our help. I'll do this for you, Matt. But don't ever put me in this position again. Get started. You want for this, Catherine? Mm, I think so. Is there any military involvement this time, Rob? Possibly. Uh, we believe this third person may be in danger. All right. Um, if I could hold something related to the case, I could form a better connection. Oh, lovely. You really know how to treat a girl. <laughs> okay. Remote viewing of the box. I see a building. Long, long building. There's scribbling on the walls. And there's a space next to it, an open space. It's a field. Uh, no. No, it's right next to the wall. <laughs> there are two circles. Four lines. 
connect your dots. <laughs> Matt, I don't know exactly what this is, but I know it isn't good. This person is in grave danger. Catherine, I need specifics. Where is he? <laughs> For a house. Yeah, it's a house. But not a home. It's... It's near all kinds of... Factories. No warehouses. A house, but not a home. at a paper house. Damn it, Pete. Lindsay and I will go to Kelly's. I want to make sure the others are all right. This is not a hangover. <laughs> Somebody hit me. Where are the Bobsy twins? Mendoza and Bramberry, they're gone. Mendoza. Right. Goes ballistic, starts tearing up the apartment. And Bradbury says they gotta get out of here, get to their destination. Well, why didn't you call me? I tried, I tried. I tried 911. That's when Mendoza clocked me. My cell was off. You sure you called? Looks like they uh, they took their projects with them. Oh, uh, so I see. There were no calls made. Listen to me. There's no record of any outgoing calls from your phone. Why'd you let them go, Mike? What? Hang on, Matt. What if Mike's calls were intercepted before they connected? That way, they wouldn't register at all. You were monitoring my calls? You had the audacity to bug my phone? Mike, Mike, I'm sorry. I'm not. You've been jerking me around since this case started. Oh, have I now? You denied having Juan Mendoza's personal file on your computer. You've been pretending you know nothing about what's going on, and I'm beginning to think you're the only one who does. 
And where are they? Do you think that the Cold War ended all by itself? And the miraculous fluctuations in the stock market are all connected. One thread. And woven into a pattern looks like diverse events. It's not one thread and somebody's pulling on it. And it's all starting to unravel. Not as fast as our friendship. You knew about Kelly's connection to Mendoza and didn't tell us? I was protecting Kelly. We're on the same team, man. We'll hash this out later. Right now, we need to find those people. Please. These are the five symbols common to each experiencer. You ever get the feeling the answer's right in front of you and you just can't see it? What about this? What if it's not a map of their destination? What, what if it's a date or a time? 11-11. November 11th. That's today. And we all know what's happening at 11-11 this morning. The eclipse. And we're right on the umbra. Halifax is situated precisely on the center line of the path of totality where the moon completely covers the sun. But both Mendoza and Bradbury were compelled to go somewhere. So what's their destination? Uh, maybe the best place to view an eclipse, an observatory. We're there. I know this place.
pack it up. Hey, Anton. So, they're gone. Just like that. People disappearing in the blink of an eye. It's like your family after the accident. Let me show you some. It's a map of the stars. Well, Big Dipper, Orion's belt, and the right shoulder of the hunter. Right. Now, this is the pattern projected by the sundial. Have a look at this. You see? It's a map of the same stars charted from a different vantage point. Where? The, the southern hemisphere? My guess is a different star system. Maybe Alpha Centauri. Pete. Yeah. Yeah. Did you call him? Who? You know damn well who else sent you. He was at the event site. Did you call him? No. I never should have trusted you. What are you talking about? I left two people in your care. Let them go. What? Some things happen for a reason. Sometimes a very good reason. I never could have saved them anyway. Let them go. I'll accept that. It's only beginning, Matt. It's only beginning. Did the people Leo SAR met in this case actually experience a CE5? Or were they the victims of an unauthorized earthbound experiment? The Office of Scientific Investigation and Research continues to search for answers. For Sci Factor, I'm Dan Aykroyd.